Welcome back. It's the Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. While the Nigeria Employers Consultation Association, NECA, in its immediate reaction said local refining of crude oil remained the only way out for Nigeria, the Nigeria Labor Congress, NLC, contended that the latest increase in the price of petrol would further impoverish the people. Now, checks indicated that each operator is allowed to change price based on its cost element under the present deregulation. It also shows that the dwindling value of the Naira has put pressure on fuel importers, including NNPC Limited, as well as major and independent marketers. I have a public affairs analyst now joining me to discuss further on this. I thank you for joining me, Mohammed Abdullahi. Good morning to you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Nigerians. All right, let's, let's start this way, uh, uh, Mohammed. Let me get your candid opinion. In an interview just yesterday, the NNPC and the NMDAPRA attributed the current fuel price uh, hike to factors of demand and supply. You know, but in your opinion, do you think that is the true picture? Because uh, if you look at things, really, it's not as though uh, they were like um, uh, a new uh, uh, importation that was brought that actually made the price uh, go up. I guess they were just speculating because of um, the forex um, issue. How do you really react concerning that? Yes, thank you. Um, I think it's not true. If it's uh, like you rightly mentioned in the report that uh, to my own understanding, please, that uh, you know, it is due to the force of demand and supply. Because I remember just last week or less than two weeks ago, I remember the same NMPC, NMPCL now, issuing a report that uh, the demand shortfall is amount, amounted to more than 18 million liters shortfall. You know, due, since the increase, since the initial increase uh, to 500 and something, uh, there has been uh, about 18 million liters shortfall by Nigeria, which means you know, most people probably who even have cars have resorted to drop their cars at home. And in fact, I have that physical experience. I just came back, I'm in Lagos at the moment, but I just came back from traversing the north, namely Kaduna, Niger State, and Abuja. I tell you, the cars are, were very, very few on the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What you find predominantly uh, on, on the roads were actually what you call Kekena Pepe. But private cars were very, very few, even in the federal capital, I must tell you. Mm -hmm. So, Saying now that, uh, and even in Lagos, the, the traffic has somewhat reduced, to, to the best of my knowledge, uh, since I arrived about a week ago. So saying now that it's due to the uh, forces of demand and the supply, I don't think it's true, because the same NMPCL, two years ago, like I mentioned, mentioned that less than, at least, Nigeria are now consuming about less than 18 million, short form. So, but having said that, I think what might result to the increase it's not necessarily the demand and supply at the moment. It's necessarily the, go the global uh, uh, rate for crude, mm. which we know because we don't refine. Yeah, in Nigeria, that is the major problem. Because we don't refine, so whatever affects the crude glo globally will adversely affect pump price in Nigeria since it's been deregulated. And that is just the candid truth. I know probably last week or so, or this week, uh, 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 is sold for about 78 or 80, 80 USD. Mm -hmm. you know? So the more it falls, the more likely, because we are just exporting crude, the more likely that oil price will be high here. Yeah. And again, even when it's high, it's the same thing. Where because we are all just exporting and we are importing the final product, all the factors involved will be the cost, cost, cost. And for you as an importer, come on. You are, you, you are looking for profit. You won't go import things, you know, uh, for five naira and then sell it for four naira. It's not possible. The least you could sell is six, seven naira, depending on your transportation, transportation even within Nigeria. So I don't think, uh, if you want my opinion, that it is true that it is due to the forces of demand and supply. No, I think it is due to the forces of the fact that uh, global crude, the price of global crude is falling or, or, or increasing, whichever it is. It will have the same problem in Nigeria if we don't refine locally. All right, uh, Abdullah, uh, the NLC seems to have a different idea of the entire situation. I watched an interview with uh, uh, the NLC president, um, Joe Ajo. He said that NNPC uh, mentioned that the independent marketers are now importing refined petroleum products into the country and they are no longer the sole importers. But the problem right now is that. 
who are these importers? Uh, we don't really know, and NNPC is not really telling us. Do you actually believe that uh, the issue of uh, uh, sole uh, importation has actually stopped you know, by the NNPC? No, I don't, I don't think is is an issue of where, whether there is a sole importation or so. Uh, but um, I don't really have an idea whether truly, depending on the cost, because seriously, uh, the, the information I, I have on the street is the fact that, you know, for instance, even um, major marketers that used to sell probably one tanker per day or particularly in a week, all over the country, maybe say in Lagos, particularly where the demand is very high, they struggle to sell a tanker of 33,000 liters now mm. in a month. Mm. So it, it, it is quite challenging. You won't go, you know, get product that you know won't sell or you will make a loss. So yes, it's, it's, very, it's very possible that uh, there are independent marketers, you know, that are importing for that. It's also very it's also not. Uh, it's also possible that there 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 weren't many, or you know, because like I mentioned earlier, the demand is really low at the moment. In fact, with this major increase now, again with this new increase, mm. the demand will be lower. So it means if you go into the first session, it's not that there is no fuel or there is no PMS. It is there, but in, in fact, the demand for it is becoming, you know, is is becoming scarce. The mm. demand for it is becoming very worrisome. You know, so it's not. It's, I I I don't want to think it's an issue of uh, whether it's only an NPC L mm -hmm. that is importing or you have no. I don't think that is the major issue. Yeah, because as at the moment, I know there is no scarcity anywhere. Mm -hmm. Like I told you, when I was in the north. It is all over the place. Uh, you just drive in and buy, and you can count how many cars or vehicles or tricycles that goes into any filling station to buy at any point in time. So I don't think that's the issue. Mm -hmm. The issue is that the product is available. Uh, uh, but the 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 what's it called? The the power of purchase is no longer there. It's no longer there. Well, I guess it's just um, simple economics. The higher the price, uh, the lower the quantity demanded as yeah. economics yeah. 101. But then again, uh, let's look at uh, possible situations um, out of, uh, I mean, possible uh, solutions, rather, out of all of this because of um, time sake. You know, a, a school of thought believes that uh, before the issue of uh, deregulation and the subsidy removal, Nigerians were not actually suffering this much, uh, coupled the fact that uh, now was uh, allowed to float freely you know some people are saying that uh, maybe we should go back to the days of uh bringing or maybe bringing back subsidy maybe that might just uh, be a change of uh, nigerians and fortunes or do you agree with that postulation or in your own opinion what should we be doing as we speak no i have I, uh, my opinion please i i was never a proponent of the removal of subsidy uh, because like i've said on your show several times you know, I, I believe uh, it's, it's not uh, a wise idea to cut off the head because of headache. It's, it's never a wise idea. In fact, if we look at generally speaking in Nigeria, you know, uh, if you allow me to say this, uh, everything seems to be luxury, which is shocking. You know, uh, housing is luxury, transportation is luxury, water is luxury, electricity is luxury. Everything you want to think of that is supposed to be basic amenity security, everything seems to be luxurious. Food is luxury. So where on earth do you have such a, a, a thing ex except Nigeria? So the fact that government is subsidizing oil and the fact that we are a monocultural economy is nothing too much for the government to do. And mind you, this, this, this is a simple fact. We have four refineries, four refineries in Nigeria that are not refining a drop of oil. Mm. That is not a, an issue of subsidy, please. That is an issue of corruption and misplaced priority by the government uh, since 8, 10, 20 years ago. That is why. You have people working all over these refineries and even in NPCF before it was either commercialized or privatized, whichever word they wanted to use, you know, and they are being paid humongous salaries for doing almost nothing. Mm. That is also not the issue of subsidy. It's also the issue of misplaced priority by the same government over the years. You know, we have people who have been, who we keep paying for importing either less amount uh, of uh, PMS into the country. You know, and so there are so many cases where even 
uh, we declare that we have imported probably 30 or 60 million uh, liters of PMS. Why mm -hmm. there were non imported, but people are get, uh, uh, got paid for it. That is also not the issue of subsidy, that is the issue of corruption. And who is supposed to tackle that? The government. All right. So, what you are actually what we are actually going away from is corruption and it's not that issue of subsidy because like i mentioned earlier everything is luxury in nigeria so okay. it's not a harm if one part or just one single part mm. the oil part it means subsidized for nigeria all right so for me i was never a proponent of subsidy but it has come how do we get out of it now the government there are so many things not in place before these things shockingly hit nigeria all right, thank you so much, uh, uh, Mohammed. Uh, that's as much as we have time for. Uh, we do appreciate your thoughts uh, for uh, today. And of course, uh, I'm sure you're actually re echoing what uh, most Nigerians are feeling right now. Mohammed Abdullahi, public uh, affairs analyst, joined me to look at uh, the issue of uh, increase in pump price of fuel. Thank you once again. Uh, thank you very much. All right, uh, as we go on the show, 2030, Nigeria will top the league of, uh, you know, uh, people with extreme poverty in the world overtaking DR Congo, India, and Madagascar. It deliberate steps are not taken to stabilize the economy. That was the submission of Professor Stephen Deccan while delivering his keynote address at the maiden launch of the State of Enterprise Report, which held in Lagos. I'll leave you with details of that report, and I'll see you again next time. I am Justin Akadon. You do enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now. 10 plus law firm. The maiden edition of the State of Enterprise Report 2022 brought together experts from the financial and professional services sector, FBS. The SAE report, a first of its kind, an annual industry publication, gives insight into Nigeria's FBS sector. The leave and his keynote address, a professor of economic policy at the University of Oxford, Stefan Deccan, stated that the financial and professional services industry is instrumental to driving any nation's economy. He noted that a Nigeria that thrives and is more stable with better economic policy will cause all businesses to flourish. Now, when you look at any country in the world, badly run or well run, Relatively speaking, you know, it can be a few thousand, can be a few hundred, can be a few dozen. Group of people with power or influence that determine the direction of politics and the economics in a country. Stakeholders say that if there is prosperity and no poverty, there would be peace. For them, the FBS industry is instrumental in driving the prosperity and economic development of Nigeria. We will ensure that together, in our practice as professional firms, we give Nigeria the very best that it deserves. And we will also ensure that the private sector under this umbrella comes together as a partner with other sectors for growth and development of our, of our nation. There's clearly a need to change the narrative about Nigeria. And we can't leave it alone to the uh, public sector. The private sector also needs to take the initiative and give in the very critical role that the financial and professional services sector plays in economic development, as we have seen in other parts of the world. This is why the Enterprise NGR was established. It's about realizing that there's a bigger goal for all of us, and therefore engaging. And, you know, engagements have taken place historically in different forms. We think this kind of platform where there is hopefully a collective voice, a sort of unified voice, can also have maybe a bigger impact. Managing Director of a Merchant Bank, Banjo Adegbongungbe, emphasizes the need for strong partnership between the business community and those with political powers. And we see the financial and professional services as a catalyst for economic development and growth. And the focus here is to provide a platform that can ensure that the financial and professional services sector in Nigeria can rank with that anywhere in the world and can also provide that catalyst and provide that platform to generate development and growth across all sectors of the economy. Just like other participants, Banjo holds that if all chronicled in the report are adhered to, everyone stands to benefit from the ripple effects of economic development. It's a 10 plus law firm.
The maiden edition of the State of Enterprise Report 2022 brought together experts from the financial and professional services sector, FBS. The SAE report, a first of its kind, an annual industry publication, gives insight into Nigeria's FBS sector.